Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, although it's not going to be a regular standard video. Instead we're looking forward to rotation and we're playing 2021 standard, meaning only sets from Throne of Eldraine onwards. And today's deck is a red-white dog tribal deck featuring Winota, Joiner of Forces as a powerful payoff. This card will still be legal after rotation, so it's worth taking a look at some of the decks that can make use of Winota, as it's one of the more powerful cards in standard. A 4 mana for 4 legendary human warrior that says whenever a non-human creature we control attacks, we can look at the top 6 cards of our library and put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, and it also gains indestructible until end of turn. So Winota requires us to have a nice mix between humans and non-humans, so so the dog tribal deck is a perfect fit, as we've got all these dogs as well as the Alpine Houndmaster that overlaps with the human synergies. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with our one drops, where we've got the full play set of Selfless Savior, a 1 mana 1 1 dog that can be sacrificed to make another creature we control indestructible until end of turn. So perfect for saving Winota and the other payoffs, as well as just enabling Winota. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Alpine Houndmaster, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two human warrior that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a card named Alpine Watchdog and a card named Igneous Cur and put them into our hand. And then when the Houndmaster attacks it gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is the number of other attacking creatures. So the Houndmaster wants us to play Igneous Cur, a 2 mana 1-2 elemental dog that for 2 mana can get plus 2 plus O until end of turn and Alpine Watchdog, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two dog with Vigilance. So these dogs aren't super exciting by themselves, but of course they do synergize with our Houndmaster, they provide non-human creatures to enable Winota, and they also synergize with our Pack Leader, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two dog, giving other dogs we control plus 1 plus 1, and whenever Pack Leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs we control. So this is also perfect for enabling Winota, because sometimes if you want to get a few Winota triggers, you're forced to attack with a bunch of small creatures, that will end up dying if the opponent blocks them, but if we can attack with our pack leader then all attacking dogs are safe so we don't need to worry about losing them in the middle of combat. And then rounding out the two drops we also have the full playset of Seasoned Hallow Blade, a 2 mana 3-1 human warrior, and we can discard a card at any point and then tap the Season Hallow Blade and it also gains indestructible until end of turn. Now note we can also use this ability if the Hallow Blade is tapped since that's not part of the cost, only discarding a card is. So the Hallow Blade makes for a nice attacker, can hit it with Winota, and it also makes use of the extra cards from the Houndmaster nicely, because sometimes we end up with a bunch of cards in hand that we can't play out, and then we can just discard them to the Hallow Blade to keep it safe. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Bolt Hound, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two elemental dog with haste, and whenever Bolt Hound attacks, other creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. So Bolt Hound just fits perfectly in our curve, synergizes with our dog, synergizes with Winota, since we can potentially play Bolt Hound on an empty board if we just have Winota in play, and still get a Winota trigger right away thanks to haste. And another thing that's important is how we stack the Bolt Hound attack trigger, because if we do have a Winota in play we want to make sure we get all those creatures from Winota first, and then resolve the Bolt Hound trigger at the very end. Same goes with the Alpine Houndmaster, so all those will be improved if we first get the additional attacking creatures from the Winota trigger. And then at 4 mana, we've got our 4 copies of Winota, which is the centerpiece of the deck, alongside 4 copies of Basri's Lieutenant, another powerful human that we can hit with Winota's ability, a 3-4 human knight with vigilance and protection from multicolored, and when the Lieutenant enters the battlefield we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, and whenever the Lieutenant or another creature we control dies, if it had a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, we get to make a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance, and that token is not a human, so it also goes with Winota, and just the fact that the Lieutenant can come into play with a Winota trigger and maybe put a plus one counter on a creature that would otherwise die in the middle of combat is also very useful. And then taking a look at our mana base, of course we did lose Sacred Foundry with the rotation, but maybe we'll get another set of dual lands in the upcoming expansion. But we do get to play with a 9 basic planes with a dog theme from Jumpstart, so that makes it all better, alongside 8 mountains. 4 Temple of Triumph, and then 1 Animal Sanctuary, just in case we want to put a counter on one of our dogs, and 2 copies of Fabled Passage. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing like another non-human we can play on turn 3 maybe, but it's definitely keepable for now. 
facing Speaker of the Heavens, so maybe a life gain deck. Alright, drawing a Selfless Savior is not bad. Don't necessarily want to trade it with a Speaker, but they might not even attack. It's going to be a Shadow Spear, which they can maybe equip next turn. Alright, let's play the Pack Leader. And then I'll sack for two, since I don't really want to trade for the Speaker of the Heavens, so staying back doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Next turn we can play Temple, and then make sure we can play We Know It on turn four. So a 2-2 two -two Speaker of the Heavens, it does attack, we'll take it. We can still attack next turn, thanks to the pack leader's ability. And we even drew another dog, perfect. So, bottom that one. And next turn we know it's gonna give us potentially three triggers. Opponent's pretty far from making any angel tokens. Which would be our main concern. Silver Smote Ghoul synergizes nicely in a life gain deck. But yeah, Pack Leader means we don't need to worry about any of our creatures dying. So it's just pure value. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, didn't even get to see what we know to hit. But yeah, this is kind of the dream curve. We want one drop, two drop, another two drop, set up our land four. And then we Nota, and you can imagine even if we just hit two creatures here, it's basically game over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Savior into Hollow Blades. Hope to draw another dog to enable we Nota. Let's see what we're up against. There's been a pretty good variety of decks I've faced so far in the 2021 format. And yep, it's maybe the mirror match with another selfless savior. Don't necessarily want to trade since I have a Winota in hand, and that might not be the case for my opponents. They've got the Houndmaster. That would be an okay draw here. Although an actual dog might be better. Alright, there's an actual dog. So Halloblade can attack. And then we'll play Igneous Curve plus Temple, set up turn 4 Winota. Our opponent's Selfless Savior holding priority. I guess that's one of the downsides of playing this deck, is that you have so many abilities between the Hollow Blade and the Savior that you can use even when tapped out. Pretty happy to trade here, because now an opposing Winota is a lot less scary. And yeah, I'll take a Houndmaster will help me refuel in case this doesn't work out. Just gonna be a watchdog. And a ginger brute. That's another card we can consider in our deck as a non-human with haste to enable Winota. I'll take two. Alright, Basri's Lieutenant puts a counter on probably the Igneous Cur. And that's a miss. Alright. So they can eat my Selfless Savior for free. If they put the Ginger Brute on the Hollow Blade, then the Selfless Savior just makes it indestructible, so I don't have to discard anything. And we've got a nice board to potentially trigger Winota again next turn. And the Houndmaster can provide additional dogs for Winota, or additional cards to discard for the Hello Blade. Don't 
don't love the block from the Ginger Brute since we were gonna get to sacrifice the Selfless Savior for free anyway. But maybe they just wanted to save 3 damage. Another card that this deck could potentially run is Amber Cleave, of course, since we are an aggressive red white creature deck. So we don't have too many issues getting it in play. But of course, if we play Amber Cleave, then our Winota gets a little bit worse and our other creature synergies also suffer. But of course, the card is undeniably powerful. So it could still be worth it to sprinkle in a couple Amber Cleaves. Take one. And we'll probably just attack. No need to play Houndmaster first. Because I want to leave. Find another Winota. That's not super useful, but might as well make it indestructible. What playing the Houndmaster first does is thin out the deck of two dogs, so I guess the hit rate for hitting humans is slightly higher. But this gives me the option of maybe pumping the Igneous Cur an additional time. Alright, so we'll pump once. We'll get a token from the Lieutenants. And play Houndmaster. Alright, so we're in pretty good shape here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Won the mirror match. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands playable if a bit unexciting. No powerful 4 drops to look for, no pack leaders to pump our dogs. But I get to maybe curve out and Bolt Hound can pump the team. I'll try it. Hopefully the temple can scry us into some goodies. Another hello blade, I'll bottom. Turn to Karyotid, maybe our opponent's ramping. Houndmaster's not bad. Although I think I still play hello blade here. It is close because the Bolt Hound means the Houndmaster also gets pumped. Alright, maybe a plus one plus one counter synergy deck. I've encountered a few of those. And they did seem decent. Conclave Mentor, of course, a big part of it. And a Stone Call for two. Does have protection from my Houndmaster. And there's Winota, so that's exciting. So Bolt Hound attack doesn't look great anymore. Although it is the most mana efficient play. And then does Hollow Blade attack? I think so, because what we're trying to set up is my opponent attacking, so more likely to attack back without losing any of my creatures and trigger Winota. So this is going to be a second main... Bolt Hound. And then next turn I can decide if I want to maybe play double Igneous Cur or if I want to go for Winota. Basra's Lieutenant, putting two plus one plus one counters. And yeah. Now with Lieutenant in play, if they lose any of their creatures, they'll be replaced by Knights. So powerful start from the opponents, but they do attack. Of course, the Lieutenants can block Bolt Hound. So an attack here, not necessarily all that amazing. Yeah, I think I want to wait one turn on Winota. Just play double Igneous Cur. Okay, maybe chump with a Hollow Blade, discards a land or a Houndmaster. And then try and set up a powerful attack next turn. Ooh, uprising. Well, that gives tramples, so chum blocking is going to be a little bit more difficult now. And the dryad. Of 
opponent might expect a Winota here, and they pass. I think I do still wait one turn. And then play Houndmaster. Don't need another Hello Blade. Opponent's got two cards in hands. And Inspiring Commander, okay. Another Houndmaster. So yeah, I think it's time. We'll play Winota, keep up two mana to pump Igneous Cur. And then the Hallow Blade can probably chill. Although I guess it does have four power thanks to the Bolt Hound. Houndmaster gets eaten alive by the Stone Coil, so that attack doesn't seem great. And since they have Trample, one toughness on Hallow Blade is not super useful. So I think this attack makes sense. And then we'll put the Bolt Hound trigger at the very end. Not a Winota. Does mean I lose a blocker here, but I gain an attacker. Is that relevant enough? I think I'd rather have a blocker, all things considered. And then we'll take another Houndmaster, I guess. We're running out of creatures to search up. And a lieutenant. So the Bolt Hound is still going to die even if I put a counter on it. It doesn't make a huge difference. So I guess putting it on maybe a creature on defense makes more sense. Like the Winota here. Or I can put it on the Watchdog. So it doesn't get eaten alive by a creature. And then that can also maybe block. Can still pump an Igneous Curve if that lines up well. Otherwise, I can play out another blocker. Yeah, I think I'm happy with the Winota on defense as opposed to an extra attacker. Because I don't think we have lethal here, even with an extra 4-powered attacker. But I don't want to risk losing on the way back when we've got this huge board now. So all the Winota creatures, of course, are indestructible, so we won't lose those. Opponent's just trying to soak up as much damage as possible. It's possible they're afraid of an Ember Cleave here, because they do have double red up, and that might affect their blocking decision as well. So now I have the opportunity to trade for the Mentor if I pump the Cur. Although we'll see if that stays. Yeah, I can't blame the opponent for taking their time, because this is a pretty complicated blocking decision. Lots of moving pieces, especially if you're trying to play around Umbercleave. Hopefully they don't time out. Alright, so I think I will trade here. Opponent does gain 4 from the Mentor dying. And they get an extra 2-2 two, two token. And hopefully I'm not dead on the way back. Got 3 blockers, opponent's got 6 attackers, but they're all pretty small. And next turn Winota's just gonna do its thing once again. Although they did do a good job of trading off for my non-humans, so the only non-human in play is the Watchdog. Sir Farron. Inspiring Commander putting in some work too here. One of the Arena exclusives, I think you can only play this in Best of One. Well, the game's not over yet. 
opponent is still at 12. And yeah, our Winota enablers have reduced significantly. Stone Coil for zero, just to trigger the commander. Interesting. And the Yorvo, that's a pretty big one. Draws a card with Uprising. Yeah, this commander is definitely pulling my opponent back into the game. So let's see. I do have some decent blocks here. Can block the lieutenant all that easily because of protection. Same with the stone coil. But I can block like this. And it seems good. Alright, so how does an attack with everyone sound like? Well, it sounds good to my opponent. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands not very exciting here, Houndmaster and a bunch of Igniscurs and Watchdogs. Let's try again, this is better. And we'll bottom the Igniscur, I think. Could also make the case that keeping the curse better, since it's an extra non-human for Winota. And then I have to decide if I want to play Houndmaster or Hellowblade first. Houndmaster first means I can play a non-human on turn 3 to maybe set up turn 4 Winota getting a trigger. So that's probably my preference. And then we can play the Temple on 3 as well. Our deck has so many 2-drops that usually we can get away with playing a Temple on turn 3. Opponent on some sort of 4-color control deck, maybe even 5-color. Sanctums, alright. Opponent on the Sanctum deck. Fair enough. So they could have some Sweepers in there too. So I could decide to play the Hallow Blade instead of one of the dogs if I want to play around the Sweeper a little bit better. Although if the plan is to play Winota, we kind of want to have an extra dog in play. It's green mana and Sanctum of Calm Waters. Alright, let's play Winota and hope for the best. So again, here we want to get the Winota trigger first and then the Houndmaster trigger. And we found another Winota, so I guess that's four additional damage. Now if they do have a board wipe, I don't get to keep anything, don't get to Make a Night Token, don't have a Hello Blade that can turn indestructible or a Selfless Savior. But if they don't have a Sweeper, they're gonna be pretty far behind. Alright, Extinction Event, naming Even, gets rid of everything. So even Indestructible would not have helped. Yeah, Extinction Event's pretty effective against us. We only have 4 1 drops and 4 3 drops, and everything else is even. Not a Winota. Alright, so we'll play Igneous Cur and Hallow Blade. Could potentially keep land in hand to discard with Hallow Blade, but I'm fine just discarding the other one we have in hand potentially. Serpone so gains two, gets to draw two and discard one. They might play a Sanctum of All this turn. And yep, yeah, there it is, so that lets them search up any Sanctum next turn. And if they get to six Shrines, they get to double all the triggers as well. Probably gonna jam another Winota here. And hope to hit like a boss race lieutenant or who knows what else. Could have played a Temple first to maybe 
slightly influence what I would hit, but we did hit a lieutenant, which seems pretty good here. And I'll put the counter on the Hello Blade in case you have a sweeper that destroys and doesn't exile. And then another lieutenant, probably not necessary when we have one in hand. They might get a Sanctum of Stone Fangs to kill some of my creatures. Or the White Sanctum can tap them down. Or they can go for the green one to get some additional mana. The Sanctums are legendary, so they can only have one of the same in play at the same time. And yep, there's a Sanctum of Shattered Heights. Gets to drain me for four. And draw four cards, so if they have another extinction event, it's game over here. So yeah, maybe the Sanctum deck could be viable after rotation. So we'll make that indestructible. Although likely still in trouble here. Could have also put the counter somewhere else, so we would have gotten a 2 2 Knight token. But yeah, with uh, Sanctum of All in play now, we should be dead next turn pretty much. Well, we almost survived two sweepers, which is still impressive for an aggro deck. Showing the power of Winota, Hello Blades, and Lieutenants to an extent. But now they get to get a fifth shrine. They're not quite getting double triggers with the Sanctum of All, but they get to draw five more cards, deal five to me, gain five, and we only have eight damage on the board. So even if I top deck like a Bolt Hound, we wouldn't have enough. Plus they can kill my stuff with a Sanctum of Shattered Heights or tap it down with Tranquil Lights. So the game's definitely over. It's gonna kill Basri's Lieutenant first. Which will leave behind a 2-2 token. But her opponent doesn't have a shortage of cards in hand that they can discard here. But I guess we'll play along. Hellblade down. And next turn the Sanctum will trigger twice, so that's gonna be 12 damage. And that should seal the deal. Alright, GG's. No Sanctums left to search up. And uh, Blue Sanctum is a May ability, so there's no risk of the opponent decking here. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Keep having Winota in my openers, so I'm not gonna complain. Facing black green. Now I have to decide which two drop to lead with. I'll probably play the Igneous Cur, because I'm also kind of bottlenecked on red mana. And the next turn go pack leader, selfless savior, and then can maybe protect a pack leader with the selfless savior. Deathbloom Thalids, okay. So don't necessarily want to attack with Igneous Cur. It would just be a trade, but we want to preserve our dogs for Winota. It's going to be dead weight to take out Selfless Savior. 
Let's protect the pack leader before that happens. Oh no, they have another removal spell drank to the underworld, so I'm left with a single dog here. So we know it does not looking great, although I'm glad they attacked. Yeah, if they left the Thalad back, I don't think I would have played Winota, maybe played a Lieutenant first. But now I think I'm okay getting the one Winota trigger still. And we hit Lieutenant, which seems the pick here. Make it a little bit more difficult for the opponent to kill Igniusker in case you have another dead weight. They did have another drag for Winota. But even without Winota, our deck is still a reasonable aggro deck with a Lieutenant, another nice curve topper. And this turn we can go Bolthound plus Watchdog, which I think beats Lieutenant here. Maybe a village rights that they have in hand, and they're thinking if they want to chum block with a 1 1 token after sacking the Thalad. Ooh, or a sudden spinneret. That was not on my radar. Alright, well, opponent's definitely putting up a fight here. Take 3. And a Boneyard Lurker. Sure. So I can play Lieutenant and still pump the Igneous Cur. Also, where do I put the counter? If I put it on the Watchdog, I could attack with essentially everyone. They get to eat a Bolt Hound for free, but I get to hit them for, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, down to three. Is that worth it? Or I can just put the counter on the Lieutenant itself, since that can match up pretty well against the Lurker, since that has protection. Yeah, let's do that instead. And then just send the Igneous Cur, which I can pump to trade for the Lurker. And then we'll get a token from Lieutenant as well. Order of Midnight to return the Lurker. But now they don't have any good blocks. Unless this is another dead weight for the Bolt Hounds. Alright. Can still attack with Hall. Everything has Vigilance. They can trade for one of the Tutus. And then uh, looking for some more action. Something like an Alpine Houndmaster here would be excellent. They can mutate the Boneyard Lurker. And maybe get back a dead weight to shrink down my lieutenant. Now, they did mutate a Lurker on top, and that is still multicolor, so still won't be able to block my lieutenant. And there's a Houndmaster of the top. Still get to hit for two. And I don't really see my opponent coming back from this. A Lenore Visionary. And just a land. Alright, the game ended up being pretty close, all things considered, when we had three dogs in hand with a Winota on turn 4, and they ended up killing two of them. But we still got there, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a reasonable hand, even if we don't have Winota for once. Pack leader seems great. Speaker of the Heavens, another life gain deck. 
think I do want to lead with pack leader, and then next turn can go savior plus igneous cur. Get those dogs in play. Heartless Acts means the savior is gonna sacrifice itself for the greater good here. And then I want to play Lieutenant. I'm not sure where to put the counter. Could just put it on the Lieutenant itself, so if they kill it, I still get something out of it. Sure. Indulging Patrician. And we can also think about pumping the Igneous Cur now. Could also start keeping lands in hand for the Hallow Blade, so I've got a few options here. But I will send everyone, including the pack leader. Let's see. Yeah, I guess this prevents the damage so they won't even gain the life. This would have been a good spot for an Amber Cleave. And then... I think I will still play my lands, because that way I can potentially pump Kerr an additional time if I... play land next turn. Silver Smoke Ghoul. Play a land and attack with all. Yeah, pack leader preventing the life gain here is not irrelevant. So they can sacrifice the ghoul. Maybe I shouldn't have played the land since the cur was lethal with two pumps already. Alright, fine. We'll discard another cur here to keep the Hallow Blade alive. Yeah, I should have just kept an extra card in hand. Better opponent is down to five. They did gain one from the patrician blocking since it didn't block a dog. Veto. That's okay. Still not really in a position to attack. And Heliod's. It's not quite gonna cut it here. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Veto has to chum block the 4 5 here since it has protection from multicolored. And then patrician. Has to chum block Igneous Cur, and they're still taking five, and the uh, pack leader prevents the life gain, so they're just dead. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, red white dog tribal with a bit of Winota sprinkled in could be a reasonable deck after rotation. Cards to look forward to additional powerful humans that we might be able to cheat into play with Winota. Additional dogs, although those are a little bit less likely to appear in uh, the upcoming Zendikar expansion. And then maybe an improvement in the mana base with another dual land, which is something most decks will be looking for. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.